Senator Ted Cruz is our guest. We will start with the biggest story in the news that he and Josh Hawley and Mike Lee, two other senators, have called on the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. It's getting a lot of attention. Senator? Michael, good to be with you. Tell me about the call of the U.S. Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. Well, we filed a brief uh, in the U.S. Supreme Court this week uh, urging the court to overrule Roe. They've got a, a major abortion case on their docket uh, coming up this next term, and, it, and it's the first opportunity uh, they're going to have to consider Roe versus Wade and to consider Casey, which is a subsequent decision that, 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 that upheld and modified Roe. And, and what we argued is, is in the now 50 years uh, since, since Roe was decided, or nearly 50 years, uh, that, that, that it has produced uh, conflicting and confusing legal outcomes. And, and prior to Roe versus Wade, the, the, the state of the law and the Constitution was that questions of abortion were left to the states, and, and that if each state could set abortion laws to reflect the values of the citizens of, of, of each individual state, we would expect the laws in Texas to be different than the laws in California, the laws in New York. And, and that's why we have 50 states. That's why we have a system of federalism. And in 1973, when the Supreme Court decided Roe versus Wade, it, it threw all of that out and said, rather than the elected legislatures in each state deciding what the proper laws are, we're going to have nine un unelected judges in Washington decreeing the answer for everyone. And it's produced enormous division and acrimony uh, and, and it's profoundly undemocratic. It's, it, it, it's also uh, found nowhere in the Constitution. It was an invention uh, by the justices in 1973, and, and I think it, it is an invention uh, that, that, that has produced uh, disastrous outcomes. You made a post, and you've been very vocal against uh, critical race theory. There was a story about a fourth grade girl in Minnesota who said that her teachers told her, don't go home and tell your parents what we're teaching you about this. What can be done about this? You know, I tell you, that that, that really was a, an outrageous story and a, and a ridiculous story. A, a fourth grader, their teachers saying, don't tell your parents, don't tell any adult the questions we're asking. It was, it was called an equity survey, whatever the heck that was, and who knows what questions they were asking because they didn't actually want mom and dad to know what questions they're asking. And, and, and Michael, you and I are both parents. Look, our schools have no damn business asking kids, particularly fourth graders, anything and then asking them not to tell their parents. Uh, it, it, it's not the school's place to step in, and there's a reason that that school is saying don't tell your parents because they know that they are shoveling garbage to these kids and the parents will be unhappy if they see the garbage. What can be done? Your question. We need to shine a light. We need to speak out. Critical race theory is based on a pile of lies. It, it, it is a left-wing Marxist approach to education. You know, Karl Marx and, and the original uh, principles of Marxism views our, our world as, as on, on a predetermined course of economic conflict, conflict between the owners of capital and the working class. Uh, and, and, and Marxism views everything through that lens. What critical race theory does is rather than the differentiation being socioeconomic class, the differentiation is race, but it views it the exact same way. It views all of society as an inevitable and interminable conflict based on race. They're teaching kids that America is inherently and irredeemably a racist country, that the reason America was founded was to preserve slavery, that all white people are racist, and, 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 and every bit of that is a lie. They are pernicious lies that are designed to turn us against each other, to increase racial division, to increase racial hatred. And, and, and we should be working towards unity. We should be upholding the principles on which our country was founded instead of spreading lies. And, and sadly, that's happening far too often, particularly at K-12 through education, but in corporate America, in the military, all across society, uh, the left is pushing these lies. 
Nancy Pelosi's, as you call it, sham commission, consisting only of people who've already voted to impeach Trump, begins meeting today. How important is it to the Democrats and the media for their narrative to try to convince America that January 6th was a violent attempt to overthrow the country rather than a protest against what's going wrong in this country? Well, they're, they're engaged in, in constant political propaganda. And, and you know, the yesterday I was in the gym working out and someone had put on uh, CNN and, and it was all they covered on CNN was, again, just, just the, the, the political narrative that anyone who, who supports Donald Trump, anyone who votes Republican, is a violent terrorist. They've decided that's a good political narrative. It, it, it's utter garbage. Uh, look, January 6th, for many people, they were there engaged in peaceful protest, and, and they did not commit acts of violence. For some people, they did commit acts of violence. Some people violently broke into the Capitol. Some people violently assaulted police officers. If you violently assault a police officer, you should be prosecuted and go to jail. But if you show up in the National Mall and wave a sign and exercise your First Amendment rights, that is not a criminal offense. And the left wants to lump everyone in there who was speaking and not committing violence into the camp of those who committed criminal acts. And more broadly than that, they don't just want to go after the folks who exercised their First Amendment rights on that day. They want to go after every American and tar. If you're not a left-wing socialist, they want to tar you as a crazy reactionary because they think that's how they're going to win elections. We still have illegal aliens streaming across our borders in record numbers. Seems to me if they were as concerned about the spread of COVID as they claim to be, that would be the first place to stop them. Where are we on that issue? Uh, You know, sadly, it's getting worse and worse, Michael. Um, We are on track to have the highest rate of illegal immigration this country has seen in 21 years. We are on track to have over 2 million people cross uh, into the United States illegally this year. And it is because of Joe Biden. It's because of decisions he made. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris made three decisions in the very first week they were in office. They immediately halted construction of the border wall, number one. Number two, they reinstated the failed policy of catch and release. And number three, Most indefensibly, they ended the incredibly successful Remain in Mexico international agreement. Remain in Mexico was an agreement President Trump had negotiated with the government of Mexico that said when people crossed into Mexico illegally from other countries, that they would remain in Mexico while their U.S. asylum cases were proceeding. And it worked incredibly well. Last year, we had the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. It's stunning how successful it was. And, and in 45 years, and then with the flip of a switch when Joe Biden came in and made these, these indefensible political decisions, it immediately turned it into a crisis. And that crisis is compounded by the fact that we're still in a pandemic. And, and uh, many of the people crossing over illegally, most of the people crossing over illegally are not vaccinated. And, and they've had persistently high rates of COVID infection, far higher than the U.S. population. Uh, a couple of months ago, when I went down to the valley and brought 19 senators down to the valley, uh, the rate of COVID positivity in, in the Biden cages, that where thousands of kids are packed just one on top of the other on top of the other, the rate of COVID positivity was over 10%. And they are releasing COVID-positive illegal aliens into communities across the country, but particularly in South Texas. And we're seeing the COVID uh, rates rise in those communities because the Biden administration, Joe Biden's being elected president, was a super spreader event at our southern border. And it continues to be a super spreader event because he refuses to enforce the law. Senator, they're saying we have to let you go because we're up against a break. We'll do it again. Thank you. Thank you for the strong statements to the Cuban people. I know that matters. Come back. Thank you, my friend. God bless.